Time for some more kitchen table astronomy at the Amherst Kitchen Table of Hampshire College astronomer and the head of Kainat Studios, Dr. Salman Hamid, Mr. Universe. First of all, we all just experienced a little bit of our favorite astronomy an hour ago because the equinox just happened. It is officially the fall as of an hour ago. What's the equinox again? Well, that is where uh, the Earth is going around the sun and it's a place where in some sense, where your day and night are going to be equal. Equinox. 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 That's exactly right. And it will also tell you when the wonderful colors of fall are going to start showing up. Uh, because uh, in the spring, it's going to get hotter, but here, it's going to be just beautiful. Yeah, so. it was already, I went to the Berkshires for fresh grass last week and some beautiful vistas en route. But we're not talking about the equinox or foliage. We're talking about Black holes. Yes, yeah, so, uh, you know, things are, let's put it uh, this way, uh, not that great in the world right now. Right. And, uh, and sometimes it's actually good to just look at some of the fantastic stuff that is still coming out of NASA, that is, uh, takes you uh, really away into the universe. And here is something that we had talked about, uh, I think, um, last year and the year before as well. When James Webb Space Telescope, one of the great observatories of NASA, hope the funding continues, <laughs> is uh, w one of its goals was to look at uh, the earliest sort of like objects in the universe. And uh, so our universe, uh, we know, started about 13 and a half billion years ago, 13.8 billion years. And it was pushing the limits, the way it was designed, one of its goals was to see potentially the first galaxies and maybe even the first stars. And one of its earliest results was um, some of these objects that it was finding, which uh, later on astronomers also, some of them were dubbed as little red dots. And people were puzzled by them. And because they looked, they were right early in the universe, like a few hundred million years after the Big Bang, and yet they looked very bright. And so some of them, some of the astronomers, and I think uh, we have critiqued them as well. I mean, some went out to say, oh, James Webb Space Telescope broke the universe and things like that. Well, that is not how science works. And that is not how scientists should talk about it either. Because when you have an unexpected result, that is actually the beginning of the inquiry. And that is fantastic. Yeah. And so here, again, it was an unexpected result because the objects look much brighter. And so the question was why they are brighter. And so one thing was like, you know, well, it's really surprising that galaxies, that light may be coming from stars. If that is the case, then how come so many stars formed so quickly? But then there were other models as well. So now a really uh, astronomers have been looking at analyzing light from these galaxies and they are, you can imagine, quite far away so they are still faint even though I'm calling them bright but in actual light they are still faint because James Webb Space Telescope is being pushed to the limits and now with the analysis and that's a lot of James Webb Space Telescope time which is very precious yeah and they have looked at some of that um, you can divide up the light and look at the spectrum of it and now there are some interesting ideas of what these Little red dots, or LRDs, technically, if you want to impress people. It's yeah, LRDs. Well, you sound like an astronomer. Yeah, that's Don't right. Don't call them little red dots, <laughs> even though that's what astronomers have called them. Uh, now, it looks like they might be a new kind of an object. And I think that's really fantastic. So, James Webb is looking into the distant past, very, just right after the Big Bang. They see these bright things that they can't explain. Some people say it broke the universe. But now they're saying we've taken a longer look at them and it may be something that we've never observed before that is creating this type of light that is brighter than we would be expecting in these early uh, millennia eons of the universe. Right. And, and, uh, and again, some people never said that it broke the universe because that's how, again, mm. that's what they thought. Like, you know, okay, let's try to explain it, how this might have happened. And so one of the things is that, as their name suggests, little. And so these are really compact objects. And astronomers really try to look around when maybe uh, there is more uh, of the stuff around it, but they didn't find it. So it is very compact. Mm. And, um, and so here is, well, I'll cut to the chase. Okay, 
why this is really exciting is because now astronomers think a new papers have come out that these might be black hole stars. They're nicknaming it black hole stars. And here is the reason why. Well, they're very compact and they're very bright. And we know that black holes, black holes, again, people think light doesn't come out, but actually material that is going into the black hole around it, it goes into the accretion disk, meaning to say this material gets spun up really, really fast, close to the speed of light as well. And with that friction, it can produce a lot of light. And so black holes are so dense that even light cannot escape from them. But right on the edge of the black hole, the event horizon, an accretion disk of material that's going into the black hole gets so hot, heated up friction-wise that it creates this ring around the black hole. It's the only thing that allows us to be able to estimate or see, quote unquote, the black hole because nothing observable can come out of the black hole. From inside, but this accretion disk is yeah. actually, is one of the brightest objects. It's the most efficient way of converting mass into energy or matter into energy, much more efficient than nuclear fusion. Okay, so this is actually a really fantastic way, and but you need a black hole for that. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so no, we cannot use it for your energy purposes, like you know, in your house. Or my Chevy Bolt with it. And right, exactly. You cannot have a black hole on the roof, like for example. It would be great, but you cannot. And so here, when astronomers were looking at it, they were like, okay, well, maybe it's a, a lot of galaxies have these super, I mean, all of the galaxies have these what are called supermassive black holes, really big black holes. Uh, and, and they are sometimes shrouded by dust, so that can become all reddish in color. Uh, and then you would see a lot of a particular type of light that astronomers can detect. They didn't see that. Mm -hmm. Then these black holes also emit um, ultraviolet light and x-rays. They were looking at it and they were like, well, if it is being powered by the usual kind of supermassive black holes, you should have those and they didn't find that either. So there was a puzzle regarding that, that in some sense, they could be these supermassive black holes or, or whatever type of black holes, but then they are not being seen in ultraviolet and X-ray light, which usually go along with uh, these, uh, these uh, black holes. And so what was going on? And so now they have looked at it and it looked like that these objects are shining like a star. And what that means is that there is opaque gases. It's just like when you look at the sun. Well, I mean, sun is made up of gases in some sense, plasma and gases, and, uh, but it looks solid. Yeah. But that's because that's the surface what, where we see the light coming from that is opaque. And so that's what we see. Otherwise, you can th in theory, you can just keep on going inwards yeah. inside of it. And so this is the same type of opaqueness we are seeing here, except they are estimating that the size of the object is bigger than our solar system. And so the characteristics are there. And what astronomers are thinking is happening in there is that at the center of this object that is bigger than our solar system, like shining like a star, it is opaque, they think then there is actually a black hole in the middle. And you have this material falling in. There's a lot of material in it. There's an accretion disk in it. And what is shining, what is providing light to this object is actually that black hole. Now, this is very strange. I mean, what I'm saying is, no, we have not seen any object like this. Usually when you have stars, our definition of star is that you have nuclear fusion going on where uh, you convert hydrogen into helium and Einstein's equals mc square. You have a little bit of material left and that actually converts um, matter into energy, mass into energy, and that's how stars shine. And, uh, or you have, uh, and then you have other material. If you run out of hydrogen, you have others and that's how stars shine from nuclear fusion or you can just stay like planets or others like you know where you, you you are just stable because of their mass and and things like that but here you have this big gaseous envelope which is being stabilized by energy that's being produced potentially by a black hole so usually when we see black holes which we don't see we see the accretion disk right. we observe them somehow because of the mass that they create. They're either supermassive and at the center of a galaxy, kind of holding the whole galaxy together with its gravitational force, or 
a star has collapsed and become a black hole and has an accretion disk, but there isn't a bright opaque envelope around it. This is something we've never observed before where the black hole is there, the accretion disk is there, but the gaseous cloud around it is being held like its own little mini galaxy being lit up like its own mini little star. Exactly, or uh, its own little star. So this is the key thing. Normally when a star explodes, it clears out everything. Yeah. And so here you have this envelope still there and this envelope is thick enough that it's opaque, right? And so, so that, that's the reason why it looks like a star the way it's shining. And so there is a separate paper there were ideas uh, that were published about 20 years ago. So it's actually funny, like this astronomer and, and his team, actually, they uh, modified their own ideas, which they had given 20 years ago. And their idea was that, well, early in the universe. So, of course, early universe is different than today. And one of the things that astronomers are looking for are sort of like first generation stars. Because, right, the first generation stars just were made up of predominantly hydrogen, hydrogen and helium. Other elements, other than lithium mostly, but all the other elements were processed inside stars. So there is a search for this first generation stars because they were pure stars. They did not have any other elements like carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, iron, sulfur. All of those elements, silicon, were produced inside stars. The first ones were just made up of hydrogen and helium. And so one idea is that well, maybe these were, and, and the properties would be different of those stars. We don't know exactly what those properties are going to be because we have still not observed those stars because those stars, the idea, the thinking goes, they might be really big. They might be colossal and they may end their life very quickly. So, and once they process, once they end their life, they have already processed a lot of materials. And so the second generation stars would already have a lot of the heavier elements. And so their idea was this other paper that they had suggested 20 years ago that there might be objects that are really big because they're just made up of hydrogen predominantly. And when they die, they actually form a black hole in the middle, just like as we would expect from a large star dying, this happens. But because there is so much material in there that even though a black hole gets formed, even though there might be an explosion, but you might not clear out the material around it. And you would have a black hole in the middle surrounded by this gaseous uh, cocoon. You can uh, think of it that way. And this might be an example of that. So the universe is not broken. We have seen something very rare that we could not explain. We meaning astronomers, not me. <laughs> and instead of coming out with a headline saying James Webb Space Telescope broke the universe, you just use James Webb Space Telescope more, continue to observe the object, continue to posit theories, continue to test those theories, and come up with another potential explanation, this being one of these, these black hole suns. So Soundgarden <laughs> discovered these actually in the 90s. <laughs> That's right. There are sun-like objects that are opaque, but they're being lit by a black hole and its accretion disk. Thank you, Chris Novoselic and the rest of you. And, and this is the cool thing about it that, I mean... Oh, no, that's Nirvana. What do I mean? Right, no. I mean, uh, uh, Chris, Chris Cornell. Thank you, Chris Cornell. Uh, you, he studied this in the Chris Cornell lab. That, that is correct. Uh, and, and so this is one of those wonderful things. That, that This is, I think, a cool moment. This is why you have new instruments, uh, like sort of like James Webb Space Telescope, to tell us something different, something new. And we might be seeing, and again, I want to caution, because this is not confirmed. But this looks like a likely scenario. And now they are actually the people who have been working on these things. They are getting more time with James Webb Space Telescope to test out, okay, if that is the case, what you would find, what these kind of objects would be doing. And so they'll be testing more. But we might be, it doesn't happen that often, but we might be talking about a new object, which we did not know existed in the universe. And so while we are worrying about a lot of things, um, including, for example, uh, funding for science, uh, including, for example, free speech and things like that. That's all serious. We should, like, you know, worry about it. But just think about this cool object early in the universe, 13 billion years ago. Here you have these objects that formed 
We don't have local analogs because those might have been very specific conditions that created it. And maybe, maybe this may solve one of the big puzzles of astronomy of how did the first, like supermassive black holes formed at the centers of galaxies so quickly. Maybe it is through these type of objects which we did not know existed. We got to stop calling them little red dots or LDR or LRDs. What is that what they're called? Yeah, LR, little red dots. Yeah, we gotta stop calling them little red dots or LRDs. I think because they are black hole suns, we should call them sound gardens. <laughs> or just call them black hole sun. It's a cool name. It's a cool song. That, that is true. They did call them black hole stars, but yeah, I think I think that's that's true. And that's suns are stars, call them black hole suns. And that should be the soundtrack of the universe. <laughs>